Well, hi folks. This is not a route for those of you with just smaller tyres on your bike. It's a beautiful route, but the centre part will require very wide tyres. If you've got an e-bike with 47 tyres, it'll be great. But the, the views are stunning, you know, the, and the roads are breathtaking. There's, it's a really special ride. Uh, it's not a loop, it's just a one way, but you could tie it in with Barmouth. But you'll see here, we had a crash part way round because the road surface just literally falls apart. So a word of warning that it's a great way to get to Cregana Lake, but you will need a bike suitable for that really rough bit. Now to get the commute, uh, if you get our commute page up, that's Paul and Diane on the tandem, then you will find us there and you'll see over on the right there the export to GPS device so you can download a GPX file and then import that into something else. Here's an overview of the route. So we're starting on that route that actually we covered the other day at Two In when we did the circle there. So this ties in with that and you could combine it with the route. So we're starting down under Bird's Rock which is where we had stopped previously for our lunch. Work your way down around the edge of the floodplain and then we turn up the hill, that steep 180 degree turn and the aim is to get to Kagenan Lake. So it is literally just a, a there and back. But it's the middle section we need to worry about. So again, I will warn you again, if you don't have decent tyres, although the first part of, and the last part of the road are spectacular, uh, nobody has put any attention into the bit at the top of the hill and it is absolutely vicious. It's quite a lot of climb, but if you have an e-bike, then I don't think you'll have any difficulty over this at all. But I would recommend starting about where we did or down in Tuin, just so that you've got uh, plenty of battery left over at the end. So here we see that the mountains there with a the little bit of cloud over it, we're gonna, if you like, pass that around lower down. And so we're gonna start at Bird's Rock, which is down at the bottom where the A is. Uh, which is, I say, where we stopped and had our lunch in the previous, or a previous route that we did. And we're going to head south west around the edge of the floodplain. And then at that point, we turn right and we start to head up. Now, in that junction there, you've got to look out for the rocks in the little triangular junction. Otherwise, you go straight past. But we start to head up the hill, and it's a beautiful climb would really recommend it. And if you have a road bike, you can certainly do the fast bit until you get to where you see those three pictures in a line. So you can get most of the way there. But uh, the climb is beautiful and it is goes on a bit. But when you get to this part, which is just around where you see the plantation at the top of the hill, you can see that dark bit and those three pictures. That's as you start to descend and you can see views of Barmouth. Um, the road is well, there's not much of a surface really, it's just bun uh, loose rocks and some of them are quite large and it's where we fell off. But the destination, been there before, so you'll see that this route ties in at uh, Cregenan Lake, which is common with our routes that we did out of Dolgethley. So we've left in the car park underneath Bird's Rock, you can see the pointy rock there on our left, and we're literally on the level here because this is a floodplain and we just follow our way around don't be distracted by any of the side roads and we've got the river to our right there are very few cars on this bit of road we're just about to go over the bridge there we go it's not much of a river and just continue to follow the road the quality of the surface is excellent there's not enough houses to warrant it, digging it up and the power and the telephones go overhead. You'll see there's other places to stop as well down here, which some people do for walking. But head your way up the hill, and this is quite a good long ride, this bit, but it's not hard at all. It's, it's got a bit of a scent in it, but uh, very gradual. The views in the distance are tantalising, but 
don't really get to see much of them because the walls are a bit higher and fairly well maintained. But as we head up here, uh, the road that we're after is on the right and it slows down. Sorry about that grey bar uh, that's come across the picture here, but we're going to turn. See those rocks in this triangular junction? That's your marker and that's where you head up. And now from this point on, the road is as steep as you can get. You see some bins there. I wouldn't want to be a bin man. There's almost nowhere to turn around once you get your bin lorry up here. You'd have to reverse out. But we start the climb and the view starts to open up almost immediately. You will notice that the trees start to decline as we get higher and the wind will pick up. But the climb is beautiful. <clears throat> now you will meet the odd gate across the road but uh, in the lower part where the road surface is fine you'll find that actually they've got cattle grids beside so you can just go round the edge of most of them. They don't recommend that you bring your car up here. Uh, in theory I suppose you might be able to get up here and park but uh, it's mostly the farmers I think they'll get upset. It is private land. So we climb up and we actually stopped by this uh, salt bin, did a few photos and then moved on. So that salt bin is where you can see that one on the picture there. And then we swing a little bit round and then there's a hard turn. Now even here the road surface is great and plenty of places to stop. If you're just taking an easy ride then you can literally stop and have a picnic almost anywhere along here. You'll notice we're continuing to climb so we're probably a couple of miles, three or more miles into the ride and that was someone on a gravel bike coming back down. So we continue to climb. Yeah, don't get distracted by that little road on the right. That'll just take you down to a farm. We continue up. And the ascent carries on until we get to those, that plantation of conifers. So the road surface here is still pretty good and the views just keep opening up. And as we head into the valley, uh, it actually gets quite beautiful if you look back over your shoulder. And you'll see that on the way down. Great pass stopping space here on the left where we actually stopped and had a picnic uh, on our way back down because we were tired. So we continue the ascent swinging round the edge of the valley and you can see ahead of us the hills that we're going to pass between. I did find this a bit tiring. I think when you get into your 60s, uh, in your head you might be 18 years old, but in other parts of your body you're definitely uh, every minute of those 60 years. So we could continue to climb. It's more like moorland here, very few trees, just the occasional one stuck in a bit of lowland. So there's some trees and a bit of shelter. And then we're just about, as you get beyond this section, this is where the road surface starts to deteriorate. Now to begin with, it's not too bad, it's gravelly. Um, and if you've got decent tires, then, you know, ours were 38s and it was fairly grumbly, but it just gets worse and worse. Once we, particularly on the final descent, so the quality of the surface here, variable, not brilliant, a lot of rocks in the center. Gates are still open, we haven't had to open any gates, but this is no longer, I think this must be private land, because where the National Trust get involved, it's, it's beautiful. So we ascend, uh, watch out for some of the puddles which had quite large rocks in the middle of them. Um, but I say the gates were still open and 
returning here, we stopped and had a chat with this lady because she had an ordinary uh, touring bike and she had really struggled, pushed most of the way to that point. And you've got about two, two and a quarter miles of bad stuff. So we're five and a half miles in from the beginning of the ride now and the quality of the surface has now dropped down and it will just get worse. You can see those conifers on the horizon. That is really where the descent starts. So that's the highest point. And that's also where the road surface is at its worst. Not in terms of boulders, but the fact that it slopes. Uh, it's got some deep ruts in it that you can't get your wheel out. And on a tandem, that's particularly difficult. So we were negotiating the road really using the grass down the center or the grass at the edge, which is not really very good. So we have to start opening a few gates from now on. And we climb up this bit. Uh, I think the forestry traffic hasn't done it any favors. And there's been a bit of building work going on. More gates and now we're at the top and you can see that we're heading down from here and it does get fast it's actually quite steep and the quality of the surface is really bad so on your solo bikes you'll probably be okay but you can see it's collapsing on the sides and the ruts are quite deep it doesn't really show up in the video and you can get trapped in a rut and once you lose control of your front wheel then that's where the accidents occur so on this bit there's a, a right turn down here and you just make sure that you don't get caught out but uh, and also watch out for the sheep that suddenly run across. So this is a quite a key gate this one here because you'll see that there's a road that heads off on the left down below. Don't take that, follow the road round to the right and then just be very careful this is very steep and this is where we had our accident. We literally just crashed off and collapsed into the surface. Uh, it was very loose but had some large rocks and we just hit one large rock while we're down a rut. There was nowhere to go and you'll probably find that on your way back you'll have to push that section simply because it's quite difficult to ride uphill on large rocks. But as we get through these final gates you'll suddenly see that the quality of the road starts to change and I think there's more traffic at this point. Still not perfect for a while, but then suddenly it improves dramatically as we get down to the Kragenan estate. Now the Kragenan estate is managed by the National Trust and they've looked after it really well. And this bit again is beautiful. And you can use this link if you want to then pick up the Mordor Trail and turn left on that and go to Barmouth, or you can go right and held, head down into Dolgethley. So there was a left turn there that takes us to the estate. Uh, the odd car, because it is a bit of a touristy place, the lake. And there'll be lots of gates on the way. So we're working our way up towards the lake and still a bit of ascent in places. But then we descend down through a few gates and I think that's the final one and now we're heading to the lake we've got part of the lake on your right and the main part on your left wonderful there toilets lots of places to stop uh, nowhere to buy food or anything like that it's literally just a National Trust car park so we're heading our way back now and we had a bit of trouble because some of those rocks had damaged our chain and it started to click at this point so we're retracing our route and as it gets to the final bit here that's where it broke and snapped just completely sheared in two so I had to do a quick repair on the side if you're doing these sorts of rides do make sure that you carry a couple of repair links and a chain repair tool if you don't know how to use it then drop a note down below and maybe I'll do a video on how to repair it but we get going again and you'll see the road is not brilliant on the ascent and actually we were tempted to get off and walk this bit. It's very hard to get purchase, uh, particularly for starting on the tandem. So you'll find little sections where we just push. We would just fall, or not quite fall, but 
you know, get three turns of the pedals and then come to a grinding halt. You'd be okay on a solo, I think, but it would be quite a lot of work. So we'll continue to push up this section till the road surface improves. Um, the camera does not give an idea as to quite how steep it is and just getting started is the hardest bit. But here we are, we're starting to move and we're heading back towards that plantation on the top of the hill. Past some students, those students that passed us earlier on, we overtake them a few times. This bit of the road, not ideal, but as we get up towards the plantation there, that's really pretty much near the top of our ascent. They weren't having a great deal of trouble on their their road bi uh, mountain bikes, but they did suggest that actually they were pushing in the odd place as well. Now we did have a problem that sometimes the front wheel would lose a bit of purchase because the descent was long and it's quite easy to let the speed pick up. So uh, it's not a problem really if you've got an ordinary mountain bike, but on a tandem uh, that can get out of hand if you're not careful because you haven't quite got the same steering and balance. So we're working our way down and now we've hit the quality road. To be honest, the, dis the return home is easy. So we stopped and had a cup of tea and then we carry on. And actually from that point on, I don't think we pedaled at all the whole of the journey home. So those of you with e-bikes, uh, you can confidently say that by the time you reach the bit of road, you've uh, got plenty of battery left. Uh, watch out on this road. Um, we've been down here a few times and there was they were doing some harvesting you know we're at the end of July beginning of August it's harvest season so there could be tractors crossing the road and they work late at night there's one but now we're back onto the floodplain you can see birds rock there in the distance so we're not that far from returning back to the car round past the farm and then the car park is just up here on the right. Great. Okay, so just to summarize the route, we start at Bird's Rock down there, and that is part of the road out of Tuin, and then round back in a big circle that we did once before. And then at the top of the route, when we get to Cregenan Lake, that's part of the route that we did that comes out of Barmouth, uh, comes out of Dolgethley, and then goes up past the base of Cadder to Barmouth, and then back along the Mordor Trail back into Dolgethley and round which is another spectacular route so it's a good way of linking things together if you wanted to do a longer one and I think we'll combine them so again reminder here is our commute page with the GPX download there on the right export to GPS device um, so it's Paul and Diane on the tandem and if you search for Kragenan you'll find us so thank you for watching please do like and subscribe this video and we'd love to hear from you, so drop a note underneath uh, if there's anything that we can do to improve these videos. Uh, the aim is to just make it easier for you to ride and to select a route. Uh, we know that we get caught out so often when we're planning a route and then it's not what we expect. So I hope this gives you what you need and we look forward to seeing you in the next ride. And that's around Verwin Lake, I think. Never know how to end. Have a great week. See you soon. Bye.